Mark King is an award-winning columnist, author, blogger, and AIDS advocate who has been involved in gay causes since testing HIV positive in 1985. Recently, Mark was featured on the June cover of Paz Magazine, which included his essay, The Sound of Stigma. Please welcome to the stage, Mark King. What I love, you know, people have talked about the diversity of this crowd and of this conference. I'll tell you what is great. It is great that this is so diverse that it took you four hours to get the gay guy. I'm Four hours. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Do we have gay men here? Do we have gay men here? Do we have men of color? Gay men of color here. Hello? Okay, they're hiding out in the lunch. All right, that's fine. I just want to gay up this conference a little bit. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do. Don't be afraid. I come in peace. I am gay. I am very gay. I am HIV positive. I am in recovery from a serious drug addiction. I am a redhead. I am ginger, if you're gay. And uh, I can make double chocolate brownies from scratch that will make your eyes roll into the back of your head. And I can say all that, and it's important for me to say all that because I can. Because I have no ramifications. There are no great consequences in my life if I tell you all of those things about myself. I have a supportive family that loves me. I have a job that nobody's going to fire me from because they're all cool with it. I have a, a loved one and partner in my life who knows all those things and doesn't care. That makes me a really privileged person. A really privileged person, especially when you look at the stories and listen to the stories of the people who have already spoken today. I realized how privileged I am. Here's my history. I, I am 52 years old. I was young in my early 20s in Los Angeles when this all began to happen, this, this epidemic and tested the week that the HIV test became publicly available and you could find out if you were HIV positive, I took that test. I wasn't supposed to, you're not supposed to take it at the time. They told you don't take it because there was nothing they could do for you. There were no drugs and the only result would be your roommate would kick you out, you'd never uh, get any services or even a haircut because people were afraid of you. And uh, that is the environment I lived in. I write about living with HIV, and when Pods Magazine asked me to write this essay about uh, stigma and gay men, stigma and how we stigmatize others, how we make judgments on other people and then voice that on them, and project it onto other people, usually things we think they should be ashamed of. They should be ashamed of that. That's not going to stigmatize them for that. Those things happen very quietly. And so what I wanted to do when I wrote that essay was to give voice to it. What does it sound like when we stigmatize other people? What is that exactly? What are we saying in our heads or out loud? What, what are we saying to those people? This is what we're saying. If you just tested HIV positive, you are a major disappointment. How could you? How could you spit on the history of our beloved dead people? How could you not listen to all the messages we've been telling you? What the hell is wrong with you? Never mind that they may have just trusted the wrong person or said yes when they should have said no or fallen in love or any of those things. Those don't matter. What matters is that they're a great disappointment. That's what stigma sounds like. And that person who tests positive, soon they're going to you know, join the ranks of sexually active, HIV positive, gay men, making them, of course, vectors of disease, unclean, murderers, that's what they are. Never mind that they're trying to find love wherever they can, that they do feel stigmatized. Never mind that escapist behavior is, is, uh, is prominent among people who are feeling stigmatized and have low self-esteem and maybe are creating a drug addiction because they can't find their own community. So they go to wherever, who will ever will find them. That's what happened to me. I found my community. They were drug addicts. They didn't judge me. That's where I went. The lowest rung on the HIV hierarchy belongs to older gay men who have had it a long time, people like me. You know, they're the, the, the uh, sunken-faced humpbacks, you know, uh, sipping coffee at Cafe Disability. 
you know, mm. working all, you know, not working all day. It's them, that's what they look like, you know, taking testosterone injections and getting their faces fixed so that we won't know what we know. We know, we see, and we judge them. And we wait for their extinction. That's what stigma sounds like. We don't just limit it to HIV positive gay guys. What about the negative ones? You know, we, we, we stigmatize the negative ones. They're judgmental. They are the, uh, they're the gentlemen in waiting. They're the lucky ones. Never mind that they're sweating their ass off every six months getting an HIV test and trying their very best every single day to make the right decision. And God forbid, if you're an HIV negative guy and you're taking PrEP, one of those drugs to help prevent you from getting HIV, because if you're on that drug, we're gonna stigmatize you too. Why? Because you obviously must be having all sorts of unprotected sex with HIV positive guys, or you wouldn't be taking that drug. So you're a bare backing slut, and that's what you are if you're taking PrEP. This is what stigma does. It acts a lot like this virus that we claim to oppose. Stigma infiltrates a little part of us a little part of our community and it turns that piece of that community against everybody else until everybody is weakened as a result. Now, if you know about HIV pathology, you know how that process ends. And that's what the gay community has become. We are AIDS itself. Now, when I wrote that, there was quite a reaction. It was one of the most trafficked articles that Pause Magazine had ever seen um, on their site, and there are over 150 comments, and that's just on their site, not to mention what went on on Facebook. And I gotta admit that a lot of the people that shared felt that. They knew what I was talking about, they felt it, they said, thank God someone's finally talking about that, in my experience. But then there were a lot of people that, I gotta admit, I read those, art, those comments, it sounded awfully whiny. And I had to really check myself and think, am I contributing to an environment in which we just go into this victimhood? Or are there legitimate ways in which I'm being stigmatized that is affecting my life in important ways? There are people around the world watching right now that can't tell the closest person in their life. They are afraid of violence. They're afraid of losing their livelihood. And I'm worried because I can't get picked up on manhunt? Really? That, that's, that's the extent of my worry? So we gotta check ourselves and make sure that maybe we are more capable of responding to stigma than we think we are. Maybe we're more equipped to deal with it. So ask yourself this, and this is what I ask other gay men to think about. Has your family rejected you? Do you have a good job? Are you able to keep that job? Do you think that they, that, that they appreciate the work that you do? Do you know there are law against, laws against firing people with HIV? Do you know all of these things? And once you make that assessment, ask yourself, what's keeping me from telling someone else that I'm positive? What's keeping me from claiming my truth and saying, I am HIV positive, and that conversation you're having across from the dinner table right now really offends me? When you talk about people with HIV being unclean, when you talk about how you don't want to date that guy because you hear he's got it, or, or, that offends me. And I say so as a person with HIV. We know from the gay rights movement that if we want people to accept us, we come out. If you are capable, and I don't mean to minimize those of us who are not, but if you are capable, you do a hard look at that. If you're capable of being out about it, of writing about it, of tweeting about it, of telling your friends and your family and those at work in the correct context, do it. It's easy to hide out. It's easy to just take our meds. We don't look like we have HIV anymore. We just go to our doctor appointments. We stay quiet. We stay silent. And then that very silent thing about like stigma keeps right on going, keeps right on growing. We used to say the only thing that benefits from us not talking about HIV is HIV. The same applies to stigma. I feel honored to be here. I thank you for letting me gay up the room a little bit. Have a great house.